Over the next few minutes, I'm going to help you support your kid even more when you have conversations about body, sex, puberty, all those things that are so important to help them grow up healthy, happy and safe. And welcome back to Sitting in a Car. I'm Sarah Sproul and I sit in a car with you each week, helping you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. And this week we're talking about Christmas. This is the last episode of Sitting in a Car before Christmas. So maybe you have another holiday that you celebrate in your family, Christmas and New Year. And I just realized that all the ways that I prepare for Christmas could equally be used to prepare to have conversations with kids about sensitive stuff like bodies, sex, puberty, consent, and all those things in the world that our kids need to learn and understand so they can create healthy, satisfying, and supportive relationships for themselves as they grow up. So let me talk to you about your, perhaps your Christmas strategies that are going to help you have conversations about all these things too. Strategy one, we are all influenced by the way our families did things in the past, the families we grew up with, how they did Christmas, or how they did conversations or didn't do conversations about bodies, sex, puberty, and all the things. So have a think about how have you changed the way your Christmas tradition is compared to what the family um, you were raised in did? You may have actively changed some of those things to suit your lifestyle or your children better. What are some of the things that you have kept on? Maybe the food. Maybe it's when you do the presents. Maybe it's what you do on Christmas Eve. Like We have a tradition in our family that has been um, carried down from my husband, John, his dad, what his dad used to do on Christmas Eve when he first came to Dublin from Kerry. It's amazing how there are some things in our families that we can carry on either because we choose to or because they work really well or maybe things that we choose not to because they don't work well. So when you're thinking about having conversations with your kids about sex, have a think about, well, what are the traditions or the habits that your family had that you absolutely, it didn't work for you and you don't want to do anymore? Oftentimes, families will tell me that those traditions or habits will be things about not talking or sitting down and having a once-off conversation that felt really awkward and embarrassing. Um, those are the sort of things that we might decide to kick to the curb. So when you're thinking about your Christmas traditions and what you love about them and what you've created for your family, have a think about the traditions to do with conversations about sensitive stuff and how you would like to reform those and make those into something that works best for your family the way it is now. Strategy number two. When you prepare for Christmas, do you do everything all in one day? Maybe you do, but it's unlikely. If you have a number of kids in your family and you have extended family that you include in things, well, when it's good and it's not COVID, that sort of large preparation or big vision for what you want for Christmas can mean that you have to spread the jobs like the shopping and the thinking and the planning over a number of days, maybe even a number of weeks, particularly if you're like me and you have family overseas that you want to connect with in some way. In the same way, sensitive conversations about bodies and puberty and how babies are made and all those things take time to create. And it doesn't mean that when our child is 9, 10 or 11, or when we just see puberty starting to happen, that we sit down and have a conversation. We can be laying the foundation of really wonderful connected conversations with our children from when they're two, from when they're born, we can start laying the groundwork in ourselves and start creating the, um, the skills and the abilities and the comfort that we need to have these um, sort of chats in a connected, beautiful, gorgeous, open, natural feeling way. You might have a timetable for your Christmas related activities that you bring out year after year. And it works really well because you don't have to reinvent the wheel every year. I'm not organized enough for Christmas, so I don't do that. Every year I sat down and go, who are getting presents this year? What is Santa doing this year? Which country are we even in this year? And I have to reinvent the wheel. But um, if we're thinking about conversations about sensitive stuff, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I already have created a strategy um, that supports a parent or another adult who cares for kids to have ongoing supportive conversations about bodies and sex. That actually increases the connection that we can have with our children as they grow. And it's unfair and 
super unkind to ourselves to expect ourselves to be able to do something so rich and wonderful and bonding um, as ongoing conversations about uh, difficult but important stuff without some sort of a framework and strategy. You would never expect yourself to be able to pull off three different Christmas dinners, Santas for however many children you have, ongoing uh, conversations and drinks with extended family without some sort of diary, without some sort of plan. Well, that same thing works for sensitive conversations with children about things related to bodies as well. And strategy number three, it's the idea around kindness and care. So often when we are thinking about Christmas, there can be so much to do that we lose sight of what the season or the festivities are actually about. Um, oftentimes it's about connection with others and coming together and celebrating the people that we care for and um, appreciate in our lives. Well, in the same way, when we're thinking about sensitive conversations with kids, it is about kindness and care. And it's not just about kindness and care for them because we want to do these conversations in a way that feels natural and easy for them. So they know they can come to us with questions or problems or fears or worries. We also, well, it would be great, wouldn't it, to be kind and caring to ourselves too. Balancing that sort of um, expectation that we have of ourselves to do the absolute very best for our children. Uh, particularly in this area of conversations about bodies and sex, because maybe we didn't have that growing up. And balancing that expectations we have with this expectation of knowing that most of us weren't shown how to do this. We didn't have experiences of um, easy conversations in the family we were raised. And therefore, we don't have a good sense of what it looks like, what it feels like, what it actually creates in our kids and in ourselves when we get to that point where these conversations become oh so natural and oh so easy and so connecting. Kindness and compassion can be, when you learn how to do it, one of the overriding values and experiences of sensitive conversations with children. So let's recap. First one, how do we look at what our family did in the past around Christmas um, or around conversations about sensitive stuff so we can decide what we would actually like to do for ourselves in the present? Strategy number two, Christmas is made up of a whole lot of little things. We usually might have a diary or a system to help us get all those little tasks done so we can have the joy and wonder of um, a really fun holiday season and in the same way you can, we can use strategies and structure like that to help us have ongoing natural conversations that connect us to our kids about bodies and sex and three third strategy was think about kindness and care when you think about christmas how can you do it in a way that feels kind and gentle not only to yourself but to the people around you and how can we do that or create that principle in our conversations about sensitive stuff with our kids? And that's sitting in a car for another week where I've answered a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person to respect themselves and the people around them. And I have a Christmas gift for you. If you would like to learn a system that will help you stay connected and even build more connection with your kids while you talk about sensitive things like puberty, bodies, sex, consent, and all the stuff related to that, head on over to the link somewhere below this video or in the email that you received about this and uh, put down your name and I will let you know when the next time it is that I teach that system because at the end of the day the ultimate act of kindness to ourselves is to do things in the easiest possible way and there's no point trying to recreate the a system or reinvent the wheel when it comes to conversations about sensitive stuff with our kids if you could just get some help from someone who knows how to do it in the easiest way. That's it for now. Take care.